An eight-year-old girl was walking to Vacation Bible School when someone kidnapped and killed her. Without a shred of evidence or a single eyewitness, her case went ice cold for five decades. Then in 2023, a victim came forward and blew the case wide open. Police finally tracked down her killer, a man who had been living a shocking lie for 48 years. Gretchen disappeared on August 15, 1975. She was on her way to vacation Bible school in Broomall, Pennsylvania, a quiet little town about 10 miles outside of Philly. Bible school was split between two churches, Broomall Reformed Presbyterian and Trinity Chapel Christian Reformed. Broomall Reformed was basically Christian's backyard. Her father was the pastor, and it's where they spent most of their Sundays. Trinity Christian was a nine-minute walk from her house. The pastor, David Zanstra, led morning service between 9 and 9.30. The plan was simple. Gretchen would walk down the street to Trinity for morning Bible school, then get bussed over to Broomall Reformed for afternoon Bible school. But somewhere along the way, Gretchen was taken. At first, no one thought anything sinister had happened. This was a small, safe town in the 1970s. Parents didn't think anything of letting their kids walk down the street to church. But actually, Gretchen didn't usually make that walk alone. She usually had her two older sisters with her. But that morning, the Harrington household was a little chaotic. Her mom was bringing home her newborn baby, and the older girls wanted to stay home and meet their new little sister. But Gretchen had a perfect vacation Bible school attendance record, and she didn't want to blow it, so she decided to walk alone. Her father, Reverend Harold Harrington, worried when his daughter didn't arrive with the other kids. He thought she must have gotten lost or wandered away on her way to Trinity. So he called Margaret Zanstra, Pastor David's wife, to ask if she'd seen her. She hadn't. She hadn't seen her husband either. Coincidentally, David walked onto the grounds during that phone call. That was odd because he was supposed to be driving kids between both churches. Panic spread through Bible camp. Everyone was out looking for little Gretchen. Pastor David called the police department and reported her missing around 11.23 a.m. He described her as an eight-year-old girl with blonde hair and pigtails. She was about three foot six inches inches and couldn't weigh more than 50 pounds. She wore dark blue shorts with a zipper and snap, but no other buttons. You might be thinking, wow, that was a really detailed description of this little girl's shorts. That's exactly what everyone else was thinking. That was way too detailed for a guy who never saw her, allegedly. The night came and went with no sign of Gretchen. The police interviewed everyone associated with Bible camp, from teachers and students to parents and pastors. Someone said they saw a green station wagon or maybe a dark Cadillac stop and talk to a little girl on Lawrence Road. Someone else saw a child running away from a white male, but that was most likely a kid running from their parents. On August 19th, police found a pair of girls' denim shorts on a fence post in Westchester, Pennsylvania, about 15 miles west of Trinity Church. They brought Pastor David in for questioning because he gave such a specific description of Gretchen's shorts, but he stuck to his guns. He never saw her. And it turned out the fence post shorts belonged to someone else, police assumed the pastor was telling the truth. Several days passed, then weeks. Two months later, a jogger found the skeletal remains of a small child in Ridley Creek State Park. Her cotton underwear had been left on a tree branch like some kind of twisted flag. An autopsy confirmed the Harrington's worst nightmare. Those were Gretchen's bones. She died from two or more blunt impacts to the head. Her blue sneakers and white blue t-shirt were neatly stacked nearby, missing were the denim shorts that Pastor David had such a photographic memory of. Police brought David in for another interview on October 30th. He said the kids assembled around 9.10 for the opening session. Gretchen wasn't with them. He dropped them off at Trinity around 9.30. He never saw Gretchen and didn't know she was missing until Reverend Harold called around 11.05. Remember, DNA evidence didn't exist. David's overly specific description was the only circumstantial evidence raising eyebrows. 48 years Years came and went. Gretchen would have been 56 years old when police finally caught a break in her case. A witness came forward with a gut-wrenching story. She wished to remain anonymous, so we'll call her SF like they do in the police report. Pastor David had two daughters, Mara and Kristen. SF was their best friend. When she was 10, SF went to Mara and Kristen's house for a sleepover. In the middle of the night, she woke up to find David groping her groin. 
When SF told one of David's daughters what happened, the girl said he does that sometimes. SF recalled a girl in her grade, Holly, that was nearly kidnapped twice. She showed police an old diary entry from that time in 1975. It read, guess what? A man tried to kidnap Holly twice. It's a secret, so I can't tell anyone, but I think he might be the one who kidnapped Gretchen. I think it was Mr. Z. Police could rightfully assume Mr. Z was Mr. Zanstra. SF told her parents what happened at the Zanstra house, which resulted in her never sleeping over again, but her parents, as far as we can tell, never went to the police. They may have confronted David about it, though, because the Zanstras moved to Plano, Texas shortly after Gretchen disappeared. Armed with this new story, police tracked 83-year-old David Zanstra to Marietta, Georgia, where he lived as of 2023. He denied seeing Gretchen for the third and final time. When confronted with SF statement, he couldn't lie any longer. He admitted that yes, it was him who murdered Gretchen 48 years prior and has been hiding it ever since. The following is according to David's official confession. David saw Gretchen walking alone down the road near her house. He pulled over in his green station wagon and offered her a ride. The Harringtons and Zanstras were close. You could call them family friends. Gretchen knew and trusted Pastor David, so she willingly got in his car. They drove to a wooded area nearby where David told Gretchen to remove her clothes. She refused and said she wanted to go home. He told police he masturbated while Gretchen was in the car. Then David punched Gretchen in the head and she started bleeding. Based on his story, the one punch was enough to kill her. David panicked. He drove to Ridley Creek and tried to hide her body with some sticks. That's when he returned to Bible camp and pretended like nothing happened. After David and his family left Pennsylvania, he took a new position as pastor at a Christian Reformed Church in Plano, Texas. From there, he made his way to a church in Fairfield, California, where he became the pastor. As he bounced from church to church, no one suspected he was anything other than what he seemed, a devoted man of God, husband, and father. After his arrest, police took samples of his DNA and sent them across the country. Wherever David showed his face, they figured there was a chance he assaulted a child. One case in particular stood out. Two days after Christmas in 1991, four-year-old Amanda Nicole Campbell went missing in Fairfield. Nikki, as her family and friends called her, rode her bike to a friend's house just a few houses down the street. Around 4.30 that afternoon, the little blonde girl hopped on her bike to go to another friend's house a little farther down the block. Her bike was the only thing they found. It was a few blocks away lying on the ground. David Zanstra lived nearby Nikki's house at the time, according to the local news station KCRA. He started working as a pastor in town in 1990. Now police are digging into Nikki's case again to see if there are any other connections linking the pastor to her disappearance. In 2005, David retired from the Fairfield ministry. When police caught up to him, the Zanstras were living in Georgia. In July 2023, David was charged with murder. Zanstra is 83 years old. He'll likely die in jail, no matter what the sentence. At least Pennsylvania Pennsylvania DA Jack Stolsteimer thinks so. In a press conference, he said, we are going to bring him here to Delaware County. We're going to try him, we're going to convict him, and he's going to die in jail. He called Pastor David a monster and every parent's worst nightmare. It's David's actions after the murder that really got under Jack's skin. Not only did he lie about it for nearly 50 years, but he pretended to be a family friend to the Harringtons. He had the audacity to attend Gretchen's funeral and even help with the initial search. Now, if you're anything like us, you have to wonder how he got away with it for so long. And even more importantly, do you think there are more victims out there? And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.